because the wind has made itself available. Can you make yourself available today? So that he can rise you and go to a particular destination and accomplish certain things. So don't tell me the wind is not blowing endlessly. No. The wind is not blowing endlessly. It is the natural man that he was talking to. Remember he was talking to Nicodemus and he was telling him, you, 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 Nicodemus, you will know where this wind is going and where he is coming from. But I can tell you where he is coming from. The source is the father. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm not releasing you. The source of this wind is the father. So you proceeded from him, but you carry him. <laughs> he is in me and I am in him. That was the testimony of Jesus Christ. I in you, he in me. So, but he is my source. So he is my brother, though he is my king. Praise the name of the Lord. So there's nothing confusing about it. He did fly upon the wings of the wind. Remember, this wind is a wind that brings what? Rain. Now, the place of God that referred us to in James chapter 5, verse 17, is instructive. James chapter 5, verse 17. Are you there? Elias was a man subject to like passion as we are. The elder is calling the attention of the church to come to understanding of who they are so that they don't begin to sing like the other brethren on the other side. Oh Lord, send down on Elijah to pray your power down. Oh Lord, send the fire. Also send the rain. The rain is here. That's what the Spirit of God is saying. Because if you can hear the sound of the wind, it means the rain is about to come. Praise the name of the Lord. In fact, the wind is a sign of the rain. Does it happen in the physical? Yes. The wind is a sign of the rain. And I'm happy, like I told you before, that this yam is boiling way fast. Eh? This pot is cooking fast. Don't miss this meal. No. Brethren, the Spirit of God is bearing witness among God's people that there is something that is about to break out. Don't be found out of it. Let nobody talk you out of it. Let nobody harass you out of it. Let nobody intimidate you out of it. Say, so, hey, this little me, which one now? No. That wind did not say it was Mike. It did not say it was Roderick. It was this house that was worshipping. And suddenly, the Lord showed a sound of a wind. And the voice said, that wind that bringeth rain. And you know what? Sometime 2020, our brethren in Calabar received the word that 2019 is the year of content. The 2022 is the year of the rain. In other words, 2019 2020, 2021, have they passed? God has been loading the church with his word, preparing a people for this way. Now, this is 2022, and 
when the, the big boss got out here and refused Jehovah to tell you as big as you reach. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. That the wind has started blowing. In other words, the rain is here. My brethren, Apostle Paul spoke to the Corinthian church. He said to them, You are behind in nothing. Oh, yes. In knowledge, in spiritual gifts, in everything, you are not behind in anything. Brethren, the Lord God Almighty has so favored this house that he has not counted us out. That in his program and plans and scheme of things, this house has a place. And the Spirit of God is bearing witness among the people. My brother, I feel I'm pushing your head so that you can wake up to the truth that the Spirit of God is testifying to. So that you can come out from yourself and not so much deception that has become your mind to agree with the Holy Spirit. That he has not counted you out. That you are in the number. For the wind has started blowing. And the rain is about to come. Praise the name of the Lord. So, don't see some great people. Don't see some mighty men believe that you are a part of what God is doing. That is the admonition of the elder. He said, Elias was a man subject to life action as we are. Can you join me and read? And he prayed earnestly. Stop there. That's what Elias did. And that's what the elder is asking us to do. They that are waiting for the rain, we continue to pray. He said, ask me the Lord for rain in the times of the latter rain. So this is the time of rain. And the wind has started blowing. So what we did that have understanding be doing? You ask that question. If you still remember, you ask that question. What shall we be doing at this time? He prayed endlessly. What was he praying? For money? For whatever? He was asking God for what? Pour out your spirit upon us. Pour out your rain upon us. Disclose yourself. Show up. Let yourself known. Open the heavens that my eyes shall see you more clearly. Praise the name of the Lord. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. That's 18. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain and the earth brought up her fruit. So that's the, that is the, that is the destination. When the rain comes, all you have been talking about, all you think you have been missing, all you think has been denied you, all you think that you have not enjoyed, the earth will bring forth an increase. Your life shall blossom because the husband man shall be the first partaker of the fruit. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, let's go to First Kings chapter eighteen. First Kings chapter eighteen. Okay, seventeen. First Kings chapter seventeen. First Kings chapter seventeen. Are you there? And the Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel, who is to open our eyes to understand this 
Sunan Bahar and the family of who he is. May the Lord bring us to that level of consciousness. There shall not be due nor rain these years, but according to my word. So what are we supposed to do again? After we have prayed, they will learn to speak according to people that understand that they bear authority. It's not a matter of I am, I am, I don't know. In fact, I don't know what to do. No, that is not the language that they speak. In fact, I don't know what to do. No. One of the prayers I pray for the church I pray for myself was the experience of Jesus at the place where he told Paul answer. He said to Philip, From whence shall we bring bread? To feed this great multitude. Philip was uh, trying to give advice. But you know what the Bible says? I Jesus knew what he would do. That's a great height. That's a height to be desired. That's the prayer of Christ. Lord, bring me to that state. That in every situation and circumstance in my life, I will know what to do. It's a great sonship prayer. And I told you the story of Smart. One of those early beds, I don't know if it was the first one, that was the market, Sister Anne. I cannot remember the story properly because it has taken long. I was at their house and Smart was turning this way and turning that way. But the man came out and said, Ah, this dog has eaten something that is not good for his body. And suddenly Smart got up from where she was lying and was hitting her head on the gate. And the man opened the gate for her. And she moved out, entered the garden behind the wall, and smelled this shrub, and smelled this other one, and smelled the other one, and cut this one, one leaf, two, three, and started eating it, and ran into the house, and went to that same place, and laid down. Few minutes, he started throwing up. He started vomiting. And immediately he finished vomiting, it was okay, it was at peace. And from that day, I began to cry for myself. Lord, if a dog should know what to do, what of me? You have the Holy Spirit. She knew what to do. She knew the signs to make so that somebody would open the gate for her. She knew the kind of leaf to cut and eat. May the Lord heal our blind eyes. Jesus knew what to do. The problem of, of, of the crowd was not the issue. My brethren, we need to cry until we are grown. What I mean is G -G -R -W -O -N, G-R-W-O-N. I was called upon the Lord until I see maturity setting in in my life. It's a heartbreaking desire in me. And I commend you with that same heart desire that you should desire to grow. Growth has nothing to do with how old you are in the physical or how long you have stayed in church. Growth has everything to do with knowing what to do. That is maturity. The difference between the elder and the younger is knowledge. Apostle John, in his age and knowledge and exposure, was crying about a revelation because the book was sealed. But here came an elder. I said to him, weep no more. The lamb had prevailed. And then his eyes opened and he saw as it were, a lamb slain. May the Lord cause me to go. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. So, before you I stand, there shall be no dew, no rain. These years, but by my word, God, may my word have such strength. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Move, move. Get the hands and come the eastward and hide thyself by the brook. Carry it. That is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Now, this is the step that is showing us. How the wind shall give birth to rain. Because when that word came, if we, are, we, are, if we just allow it to fizzle away, we may not get what is following that word. It is a promise, yes. It is a word of encouragement, yes. But it puts a demand. On you, on me, he puts a responsibility on the people. If God has qualified you to come to the estate of being a wind, congratulations. Now, a messenger cannot die on the way to deliver his message. Get me right. Get me right. So you will not die. So I will not die. Because I am a bearer of a good idea. I am a carrier of a message. What is the message that I carry? The law is about to show up. And I cannot carry such a good news, the gospel, and die on the way. So I tell somebody, Samson cannot die at the roaring of the lion because he has been anointed to deliver Israel from the hand of the Philistines. So he is a witch. He is what? A wind. And as the wind began to blow, the princes and principalities of the land, the direction he is headed to, don't tell me the wind is blowing endlessly. The direction he is headed to, the prince of that zone, came out and challenged him. But don't tell me that the bearer of the glory shall be eaten by a strange lion. This cannot happen. These are some knowledge that will put faith in your heart. You are a bearer of God's tidings, so you cannot die on the way to deliver your message. You cannot. You cannot. You cannot. Because you did not send yourself. And you also need to understand the emperor that is going with you. That's the name of the Lord. You think a wind is one person? A wind is a mighty force. A wind is a mighty force. And at this point, I can tell you the reason for the conflicts. Eh? The next five minutes. A wind is a mighty force. Do you know why the lion roared against him? Do you know why the storm arose? Immediately Jesus and his disciples entered the boat and wanted to cross the other side. Storms are created. When two winds of different temperatures meet. When two winds of different temperatures collide. A storm is created. So are you surprised that a man that carries a holy atmosphere enters into an office and meets a lady that belongs to the lake 
and she begins to roar at you. And they begin to respond by saying, What is the problem between me and this person? It simply shows that you don't know the emperor you carry. And they don't understand how spirits react, how things react in the realm of the spirit. When two serpents meet, they don't start fighting immediately. They will rise and raise their heads and measure. They will do what? If you see this one rising, lightning in his mouth. And the other one will raise himself as well, and the two will measure. If the smaller one is wise, he will just quietly fall down and run away. But if he judges himself capable, the fight starts. And so, when a, a man that is carrying a holy atmosphere meets an evil influence, there is going to be a charging, a charging against one another. And most times, the one that will charge against you is the force of darkness. We will charge at you. To intimidate. To fear. But I ask you to awake to who you are. That when they roar at you, you stand in the power of the Holy Ghost. And go back. And go back. The Bible says something took that lion and tore it. Praise the name of the Lord. Somebody wanted to eat me. Look at me. He wanted to eat me. It was an office environment. And he said, I will deal with you, I will deal with you. He said, hey. For two weeks, he was threatening. Two weeks. I said, sir, sorry, don't carry your wala and go your way. Two weeks, he was harassing. So that particular day, I said to him, sir, that thing you will do tomorrow, do it now. I am ready for you. And in the night, I saw him across the wall with a mighty python in his hand, pushing the python to come and attack me. And when the python could not come, he jumped the wall and came in. And now put the mouth of the python on my hand to bite me. And I took the head of the python into my mouth to eat it. And when he saw I was almost eating the serpent, he forcefully snatched it away from my hand and took it and jumped over the wall again and ran away. That experience repeated twice. Within the space of two months, his, his, his job was terminated. This kingdom is to be proved. Don't be afraid for you carry the rain and no man can hurt you. No one, I say it again, no man can hurt you. Why? You carry the rain. No spirit can hurt you. Why? You carry the rain. You did not send yourself. There is one that sent you. And do you know what the word of God says concerning the messenger? He said, God has given the word. And great are the company of those that publish it. Can we say it again? God has given the word. And great is the company of those that publish it. So if you are a carrier of good news, you should not be afraid. Because great is the company that go with you. Praise the name of the Lord. In other words, 
when you see two winds of different temperatures meet, don't be afraid there will be a clash. Don't be afraid. There will be a clash. I will limit myself to preach the word and not continue with experiences. So, it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook and I have commanded the raven to feed thee. So, what are we supposed to be doing? The thought. Drink of the brook. Eat of the bread that the ravens are sending. Praise the name of the Lord. Sometimes the devil may be your wife. He just give you a word that will not make you very comfortable. They eat it. Receive it, you child. In all humility, that might be your salvation. Sometimes it might just be your child. And you say, Dad, I've not seen you angry like this before. What is it now? And the message has been sent. If you are sensitive, you just calm down and listen to the rest of the message. It might just be somebody you meet on the road. It might just be somebody that walks into your shop to buy something. And suddenly he drops a word. That's the manner of his visiting with us. If you understand the reverend, you will know that the reverend is an unclean animal. And Israel is not to eat anything that is unclean. But this reverend, God was clear. He said, I have sent the reverend to feed you. He will bring you bread and meat. Don't tell me I can't receive a message from such a vessel. Because part of the character of Jesus is that he was mad beyond measure. That when we see him, there is no beauty in him that we should desire him. And every one of us turns aside. Don't turn aside from a messenger that has been sent to save you. Receive that bread. Receive that meat. Then drink of the brook. The Bible said concerning Jesus that he shall drink of the brook on the way and his head shall be lifted up. There is no man that drinks of the brook on the way whose head shall not be lifted up. There is no man that receives the voice of the Holy Spirit and sticks to it that will end in calamity. Praise the name of the Lord. By this no time, we are going to stop here. The wind and the rain. There is a people that God is furnishing with his life. There is a people that God is equipping with his nature and character. I was excited when the brother said, if you lose money, you have lost nothing. If you lose health, you have lost some, something small. But if you lose character, don't lose the nature of God. Don't lose the character of God. That is all you are. That's all you have. That is your identity. That's your life. If it is taken, that's a lot of problem. And let this camp awake to the truth that we are called to make war. Maybe when we come back, we can talk about the force of this wind. Because this wind is born for collision. This wind is born for pollution. There is no wind that blows and walls are not broken down and trees are not uprooted and houses roofs are not tapered and mighty trees are not brought down. The nature and character of wind is demolition. Nothing stands on its way and that is who you are. That is who you are. And I can tell you, my brother, again and again, I look to this reality. God has brought you to an estate of a wind, a mighty force. So when you go to the place of prayer, you can begin to say to God, 
Grant me understanding of this estate into which you have brought me, so that I will not lose the force, so that I will not lose my sharpness, so that I will not lose my effectiveness, so that I will not be afraid of trees because they are big, because I am the messenger that is sent to cast them down. Praise the name of the Lord. Shall we bow our heads?